Hey friends, this is Arjun Iyer from the Express Videos and creator of the RX Study Planner. Now, given the volume of information you're expected to master for step one, proper planning is essential for not only acquiring, but also retaining the knowledge base you need. The RX Study Planner is a spreadsheet that takes the guesswork out of planning. It's precise down to the tenth of an hour, but automated to allocate the appropriate amount of time to each subject, and amenable to planning out your schedule either all at once or day by day. So let me show you how this works. When you download the RX Study Planner, it's going to be on Google Docs in a view only mode. This is the master copy. So what you're going to do first and foremost is follow instruction number one and make a copy. You can name it whatever you want. It's going to be your buddy over the next one and a half months. You can name it something cute. I'm going to call mine Study Buddy. And here we go. Get excited, guys. All right. So the first thing you do to set up your RX Planner is you start on the Daily tab. Now, the name of the game with this tab is Sustainability and Realism. Remember that even though one and a half months probably doesn't sound like nearly enough time right now, don't worry, it is. When you're in the middle of things, to maintain a regular study schedule over one and a half months, if you're going to put yourself on as minimum sleep as possible, breakneck studying throughout the day, you're going to burn out quick. Not only that, you're going to get dumber and dumber the more you deprive yourself of sleep. So what I encourage you to do is set up a daily plan that during the first couple of days is going to seem almost easy because I guarantee you by the end of those one and a half months of concentrated studying, it's not going to seem nearly as easy as it started off. So first of all, sleep. Put in your hours of sleep you're, you need to function optimally. I'm going to underline that as you can see here. For me, I need a fair amount of sleep. I'm not one of those gifted individuals who can survive on two hours. So I need about eight hours of sleep. I set myself a wake up time of seven in the morning and a bedtime of 11 at night. Done. Meals. This is the other essential. You have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to poop. Meals take into account the fact that you not only need to eat, but also in many cases you need dishes to do, there's cooking to do. Fortunately for me, my girlfriend at the time, now wife, was helping with a lot of that stuff. So I was able to spend half an hour for breakfast, half an hour for lunch, and because I like to cook, an hour for dinner. But it may take longer for some of you who are going to be doing all that stuff yourself. Self-care. This is stuff like personal hygiene, please shower, and exercise. Exercise is an important one to go over because since you're going to be spending a lot of your days for the next one and a half months sitting your butt down in a chair and studying, exercise really helps you clear your mind, get your blood flowing. It's a good way to let off some emotional tension that will undoubtedly build up over this period of time, especially if you're in the habit of exercising already. Your body is going to feel real weird if you try to shift it all of a sudden to a completely sedentary lifestyle. So for me, I included a half hour at the beginning of each day for showering, shaving, brushing my teeth, and all that stuff, and an hour a day for exercise. Now, the next four, material review, question bank, going over questions, and a broad category I call miscellaneous, these are going to be your four pillars of study. And the way you break this down is very personal based on what is most efficient for you and how you most effectively study. For me, I find it frustrating to go into a question bank not knowing anything, so I apportioned proportionally more time to material review. So I did about four hours of material review, three hours of question bank, three hours of going over the questions because I'm pretty neurotic about going over every single answer choice. And you see as you do that, that this number over here, the total number of hours you have scheduled, starts to increase as you populate these columns. And the amount of unplanned time you have left to allocate to other stuff will go down as a result. This will give you an idea of how much time you need to apportion to other things. Breaks. Please take breaks. And the way I think it's most beneficial to figure out how much break time you need is do the daily planner. I'll go ahead and forward over to how I planned out my schedule. And as you can see, there's sleep time, I wake up in the morning, I do my I run on the treadmill, and, you know, to, to add some study efficiency there, that's when I would do flashcards to reinforce the rote memorization stuff that I had trouble with. You can see that I've put material review blocks in one-hour stints. 
I'm pretty ADD. I don't like sitting down for a long period of time with my nose in a book. I get antsy in the pantsy. So I made sure that after every hour of material review or after every hour of going over questions, I allowed myself either a 30 minute break or I had one of my meal periods after that just so I could clear my head a little bit. And this allowed me to see how do I need to position these blocks so that I'm efficient with the breaks I'm taking. So I count up the number of breaks I have on my schedule. It's one, two, three, four breaks. Four 30 minute breaks makes for two hours, which I put in the column over here. And after that, I was left with half an hour of unplanned time. And now I can kind of do with this what I will. So what I did was I built in an extra half hour in each day as flex time. Say my studying was running long on one section, longer than I anticipated, which happens to everybody. I'd use it for that. But if I got done with my work early, I'd call it a night. I would allow myself, you know, surfing the internet, reading a book, doing, you know, normal people things. So that's half an hour. And the goal here is to account for every hour of the day and plan it in a way that is, again, say it with me, everybody, sustainable and realistic. Go ahead and click on the next video to see how you map out the monthly planner. And happy studying, campers.